Hey, it's Neville Medora here. I usually don't like giving advice because I think everyone has different advice and paths they should follow. However, here are just nine things I'm glad I did when I was younger. That's all. So you can take these, leave them, or maybe just take one and leave the rest. Who knows? I hope you like them. Now, to save you some time, I'm just going to show you what this is right away. I don't want to waste your time with a bunch if you don't think these are any good. So here are the nine things that I was pretty happy I did when I was younger. So let's get started and explain each one of these. Number one is do lots of experiments, okay? Don't start a bunch of businesses, start a bunch of experiments. Here's the reason behind this. A lot of people I know when I was younger tried to start businesses and they told everyone, hey, I'm gonna start this business. And they would start a business. And you know what? When you're young, you just try a bunch of stuff that doesn't work sometimes. And because they told everyone, they felt attached emotionally to that business. And for that reason, they ended up just like going along with this business that didn't really work that well. And they just like kind of painfully stuck with it forever. And it just kept going downhill or just never worked. Whereas if they were to say that, hey, I'm trying this experimental business or I'm trying this little experiment, what happens is it detaches you from any sort of real attachment. It just says, hey, I'm trying this little thing. If it doesn't work, big deal. It's an experiment. Who cares? Throw it away. So I always told myself I was starting little experiments. Some of these actually turned into profitable businesses. A lot of them just fell by the wayside. And because I wasn't telling everyone that, hey, this is my identity. This is my business. This is my LLC. I could just try little things and see if they work. And if they got bigger, then I would form like an LLC around them and incorporate and do all that crap that you need to do sometimes with a bigger business. But if it's just a small little thing, try an experiment. Don't try a business. So step number one, I was very glad I tried a lot of little experiments. Number two, you're going to die, plan life backwards. I always realized that I was going to die. And here's how. In middle school and high school, I used to read a lot. And I read all these autobiographies about successful people. And I'd say, well, I kind of want to be like some of them. Well, so how do I do that? So I tried to plan my life to be like a lot of them. But here's the thing. It was difficult to plan life if I didn't know when the end of my life was going to be. Like I knew when I was born and I knew how old I was at the time. But then when does it end? So it was very difficult to plan life without an end date. So I made my end date at 85 years old. So November 17th, 2067, I'm done. That's just the end of my life. That's what I've decided. So I planned life backwards. And that was actually a very helpful thought. The reason is, if you want to do something very physical, like climb Mount Kilimanjaro, well, when you're 75, it's going to be really physically demanding to do stuff like that. So you got to do it when you're much younger. And if you know that you're going to die on a certain date, you can reverse back and go, oh man, I only have like 45 years left or 40 years or 20 years. What do I want to do? So it forces you to plan life a little bit better. Some people find this morbid. I find it very helpful because I know I'm going to die someday anyway, even if medical technology comes up and gets better. Yeah, that will extend life, but maybe not indefinitely. So I'm planning to go at 85 years old. And I did that a long time ago and I found it exceptionally helpful. And honestly, it made me a lot happier person. It made it easier to make decisions knowing that, look, this life is finite. If you're really, really young right now, you may feel invincible and not even associate with being older. And that's fine. That's what you're supposed to do when you're young. And that's great. But just remember, you will get older and one day you will die. So just remember that. <laughs> All right. Number three is start a blog. Now, I started a blog around 2003 and I was even posting articles online before blogs were even a word. This was probably the single greatest thing I ever did. And the reason is if you have a thought, you can write it down or take a picture and amplify it to the whole world, potentially, with the blog. Now, there's a lot of other ways to have a blog now. So you can have a blog, you can have a social media account, you have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever it is. But I would suggest that your blog is always your home. Your content should live on a blog. And this could be a personal blog or it could be about a specific subject. I would personally suggest starting a blog, maybe with your name in it. So mine was called Nev Blog because my name is Neville. So it's just got Nev Blog, real clever, right? But that actually gave me my first bit of exposure on the internet. And it was crazy. Most of my friends, most of my very close friends till this day, I still meet through my blog. It's really interesting when I think about all my close friends, because when you put yourself out on a blog, people from across the world can say like, hey, that guy's kind of interesting. He's kind of interested in similar stuff as me. Maybe I should reach out. So I've met people through every part of the industry and in every part of the world by having a blog and just posting stupid thoughts on it. That's it. 
So if you do feel like you have stuff to say or like to learn and want to document your journey, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, why not just start a blog? It's a pretty low effort thing. You can go to Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, any of these things, medium.com even maybe, and just start writing online and getting your thoughts out there and see if you like it. Number four, I would always take advice from people who would walk the walk. That means if I wanted to be like someone because they were rich or because they did some certain thing, I would make sure that I'm taking advice from a person who actually does it. I feel like when I was younger, a lot of people would talk about stuff and I was just like, wait a second, you're talking about how to get rich, but you're not rich. So uh, like, do you really know how to do it? Like if you really knew how to do it, wouldn't you, wouldn't you just have it? Or I used to listen to people talk about search engine optimization, SEO and ranking the number one on Google, but their own websites did not rank number one on Google or none of their clients did. So I was just like, do they really know what they're talking about? So if you really want to be rich, I would suggest listening to people like Warren Buffett, Naval Ravikant, those types of people that actually are rich and are giving away their information for free and don't really expect anything big in return. I was fortunate because I grew up in the kind of early days of the internet. So there's not a lot of like YouTube gurus and Instagram gurus flashing cash and Lambos and rented yachts and stuff like that. A lot of those people might have some advice. I'm not saying don't listen to them at all, but just remember, be wary. If what they're selling is just their own lifestyle, they're using you to get rich. So they're not actually rich themselves. They're using you to get rich and then show that they're rich to get other people to show them that they're rich. And like I said, nothing wrong with that. But just make sure whenever you watch people who are actually walking the walk, they often have very different advice and very different mentalities. I remember getting enamored by day trading at one point when I was in college. And I was looking up all these sites where they actively day traded a lot. And I noticed that a lot of those people in their real life were actually kind of struggling and actually didn't have too much money. And I was like, wait a second. So if they're the ones I'm learning from and they're not really that rich from day trading, like, do they really know what they're talking about? Then I started listening to someone like Warren Buffett who talked about just like picking a stock very carefully and then holding it for 20 plus years and doing nothing. And when I started taking that advice in the stock market, I started making more money and had way less stress because you really didn't do anything. Whereas when I was taking advice from people who are very active in trading, I felt like I was doing a lot of work, waking up morning to catch the bell opening and a lot more stress and then not even making that much money. So I was like, when I listen to the guy who walks the walk and talks the talk, Warren Buffett, I make more money. So just remember that. Number five is become a triple threat. See, if you go out into the world and you only know one skill, let's say I only know copywriting and how to type words in a Google Doc. Well, that makes me only so valuable because I could only do a certain skill. But let's say I also learn Photoshop and I know how to make images really well. Well, now I'm a double threat because in addition to typing out text and organizing it correctly, I can make images. Now, let's say I also buy a camera and learn how to edit videos and post them on YouTube. Now I know how to write, how to make images and how to do video. That makes me a triple threat. That means I know three things sufficiently well that other people can't do. So that unique combination of skills can make you a triple threat. So you should always strive to be at least a triple threat. That means being curious and learning new software, learning new skills, and possibly skills not necessarily directly related with what you do. Maybe if you know video production, writing, and tennis really well, perhaps there's a little area that you can fit in that you could be the best in the world at. So I would suggest that you become a triple threat. I was very happy that I learned to write. I learned to make web pages. I learned to make images. I learned videos early on. I learned a lot of these things. I started a lot of different small businesses of varying success. And so that made me a, just a more effective person than a lot of people my age. And if you start at a really young age, you can acquire a lot of good skills. Just remember, when you're young, you're really curious and hardworking. So you can pick up a ton of good skills. Number six. This is something I was very, very happy I did. See, when I was young and in college, I wasn't making too much money. So if I wanted to buy something like a book that could help me out in life, and it was $24, I'd have to think like, man, $24, that's a, that's a little bit pricey. But I did something smart. And I hope you do this, especially when you're young. I started putting 10 to 30% of any income I made into what I called an investment account. Now, I'm not talking about like a stock brokerage account. I'm talking about just an account that just held some cash. And then anytime I needed something that's going to help me in life, like a book, an online course, maybe a suit so I can go to fancy parties, maybe a new laptop, I could just buy it because that's an investment in myself. 
So I had this investment account, which means I invested in myself. So let's say I had 1200 bucks in this investment account and I wanted to buy a $24 book. Well, I didn't have to think about it at all. I didn't have to wonder, oh, should I buy this? I don't know. What, should I take that class that costs $400? I would always have the money in that investment account that I could just plunk down if it was for an investment that was going to help me get further in life. Number seven, take more notes than other people. Right now, it's pretty easy to take notes on almost every device. But I noticed way back in the day that there's a secret advantage I had over a lot of people. You see, I was really early to the tablet PC game back when it was like Toshiba that made tablet PCs. And in class, I would take really detailed notes on this tablet PC. I'd either type them out in handwriting. It didn't really matter. But the point was, a lot of people will come to me asking for notes because they didn't have the information. And I was like, huh, that's weird. I know all this information, they don't. All I did was just write it down. It wasn't anything special that I did. And so that led me to keep taking notes my whole life. So as phones came about, I always have a notes file. Anytime I'm listening to a podcast, I take tons of notes, either in a physical journal, on Google Docs, or on Apple Notes, wherever. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you take lots of notes on things you watch. Think about it. I bet you watched some YouTube videos about a year ago. What was it about? What'd you learn? You have no idea, do you? Neither do I. But you know what? You know what remembers? My notebook. My Google Doc with all my notes. That remembers. My Notion with all my notes. My Apple Notes. Whenever I write stuff down on a sticky note and store it in a drawer. You just remember more stuff when you write stuff down, which makes you more effective. So later in life, when I'm thinking, huh, I wonder what I should do right now. I can go look through my notes and jog my brain and get good ideas and be like, oh yeah, I remember watching this interview about this and it all floods back right away. And that's all because I took some notes. It's almost like your surrogate brain. Your brain can only store so much stuff temporarily, but if you take notes, it could just ever expand to infinity. So take lots of notes on podcasts, on videos. Anytime you hear a cool quote, save it, store it, note it. Number eight, go through a small day trading phase. Now, this is kind of a weird one, but hear me out. When I was in college, I had a couple of businesses. So I had a little bit of extra money to put in the stock market. Now, here's the thing. I really thought I was going to be a genius at this. And here's why. When we were in high school, there's a bunch of us dorks that would use computers and use a Yahoo stock trading simulator. And it gives you a million fake dollars to go and put in the stock market. And so when you have a million fake dollars, you're just like, oh, I'll put $500,000 on that stock. I'll put $300,000 on that stock. And it goes up or down and you feel nothing because it's not real. The first time I put just like 800 bucks in the stock market, I was freaking out every time it went up or down. Every time it went up even a bit, I'm like, I'm a genius. I made 100 bucks today. And then every time it went down, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? I lost $800. And I noticed myself getting really into this. And I went through a small day trading phase, which I also saw a lot of friends go through in college. But here's the thing. The friends that did it much later in life what they did was make much bigger mistakes. You see, in college, I started realizing that the stock market goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And on a daily basis, it, it's really stressful. But if you zoom out on a stock chart, you can often slowly see it going, but like an overall trend if you pick the stock right. And so what I noticed is that the daily fluctuations in a stock or your everyday life don't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. That's what it taught me. That if you have a bad day, well, tomorrow will probably be better. Or next month, you're not even going to remember. Maybe you had a bad day three months ago. Do you even remember it? Probably not. So that's what that taught me. And here's the other thing on the financial side of it. A lot of friends that got good jobs later in life, they started to get 401ks and stock trading accounts and IRAs and all that stuff. And they'd put money in a stock and track it every day and get so stressed out. And they're like, oh my God, I put money on Tesla and now it's down and blah, blah. And they get really upset and emotional and make these dumb decisions because they were so emotional. Whereas people who went through a stock trading phase before in life are just kind of like, whatever, small fluctuations, sweat off my back. I don't care. I'm not even paying attention. So maybe go through a small stock trading phase early on in your life so you don't make big mistakes later in your life. Number nine. Now, not everyone can do this, but what I would suggest is that at least part of the year or permanently move to an area with lots of brain power. That means if you move from a small city to a larger city, you're just going to find people of a different caliber. You're going to find companies of a different caliber. If you live in a 2,000 person small town, you're not going to be exposed to all the people that you would that if you lived in New York City or San Francisco or Beijing or Tel Aviv. 
you're just going to find a higher caliber of people and a more diverse crew of people to hang out with with diverse ideas and, and companies and backgrounds. So that's a really good thing for your life, especially when you're young. And the reason is, I know we interact a lot on Twitter. I know we interact a lot on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever you have at social media, but there still is nothing compared to just hanging out on a Tuesday at a bar with some friends and they bump into some of their friends and you end up meeting these really cool people just naturally. The serendipity of going to a larger city with a lot of brain power is immense. A lot of my friends that lived in San Francisco during the big tech bubble and then they moved to Texas, they would instantly have an advantage over other people because they just knew more people. So you'd say like, oh yeah, um, that, that company Dropbox is really cool. And they'd be like, oh yeah, I hung out with the CEO. We text all the time. You're like, how do you know him? You're just like, oh, we just met at a bar. And you're like, what? And so when I was younger, I actually started going to these places. I started going to San Francisco for the summers and just hanging out there. And the crazy part was, I met so many of my close friends and awesome people just going there temporarily, but my whole family lived in Texas. So I wanted to be closer to that for most of the year. But the point is, if you go to these areas with a lot of brain power, you become your surroundings. There's that quote, it's like, oh, you're the top five composite average of the people you hang around. Well, if you're in a podunk nowheresville town, that's who you're hanging around. You know, those are the people that you're going to be like. Whereas if you're hanging out in Silicon Valley or in an awesome area of Shanghai or Beijing where there's a lot of engineers around, you're going to become that too. So I would say for at least part of the year, spend extended periods of time in areas of high brain power. So those are nine of the things that I was very happy I did when I was younger. And I'm gonna list them here again, real quick and rapid fire. Number one, do lots of experiments. Number two, you're gonna die. Plan life backwards. Number three, start a blog. Number four, listen to people who walk the walk. Number five, become a triple threat. That means learn a lot of different skills. Number six, start an investment account and put 10 to 30% of your money in it. Number seven, take more notes than others. Number eight, go through a small day trading phase. And number nine, go to areas with lots of brain power. I was very glad I did a lot of those things and hope you take some of that knowledge and use it for yourself. My name is Neville Medora. Thank you. Hey, it's Neville here. I wanna tell you quickly about the copywriting course. Yeah, this is our paid product. So what it is, is of course, it's a course about teaching you about email, copywriting, all that kind of stuff. Autoresponders, blog posts, content marketing, social media, all that kind of stuff is included, of course. But the thing that we've done that's really, really cool is we actually make it very, very interactive. In fact, more people come in for the community than the course alone. You can find a lot of free stuff online nowadays, but what you can't get is actual help from working professional copywriters with very proven track records. So let's say you have a blog post that you want to say, um, I want this to be the best blog post ever. How do I do it? Well, you're just sitting there in your room typing by yourself. Well, what do you do? So members of the copywriting course can go use our little tool to submit their blog posts and it shows up on our little form. Myself and other copywriters will go in there and give you feedback. A lot of times we'll rewrite entire sections. A lot of times we'll mock it up in a different way. A lot of times we'll give you feedback on what you should do, what you cannot do, some best practices and ways to make it even better. Even people from our community will often just pitch in and be like, hey, I have a blog post like this and I did something like this and it worked really, really well. So you get feedback from a wide variety of people. And sometimes our opinions differ. Sometimes our opinions are the same. But the thing is you get to write with a group of people. So you get a review group to write with instead of just writing in a silo by yourself. This means your content becomes much better. Also, let's say you have a sales page where you sell something. It could be an e-commerce product, a digital product, whatever. What if you're like, hmm, it's converting at 1%. Can I get it to 5%? Well, how do you do that? Because see, you have seen that page so many times. You start like being inside the box. You don't know what is good on the page and what is bad on the page anymore. So you use our little tool, you upload it and it goes into our members area. And then myself, other copywriters, take a look at it, even the community. And we'll often rewrite whole parts again, maybe mock up some images that you can use and then we'll make the page convert better. And then you can report back how it's doing and then we can make it even better. So it's an iterative process you can keep going on. Some of our members have forum pages that are 10 plus pages long because they've just iterated so many times and we keep helping and helping and helping them. Also. 
Let's say that you do want to learn about how to make an autoresponder or something like that for your business. Well, we have whole sections and courses in there that you can learn from on your own time and they're interactive, meaning you can post your questions or post your autoresponder. We can help you in real time with it. Another thing about the members area, live calls. That's right. Instead of just talking to a little black box on your computer, you actually get to talk to us on Zoom office hours. So every other week, every week sometimes, we actually have office hours where you can just join and ask a question and actually get us to review your copy on the spot. People use us to review copy. They get advice. They get general freelancing advice sometimes. A lot of business owners will say, hey, I got this page and it sells a lot, but how can we make it sell more? And we go through it. Another common thing is people ask for pricing advice. They're like, hey, I've been selling this for $50 for a long time, but I want to increase the price. How do I do it? So we'll go through all those ways and we'll get input from other people on the call as well as other professional copywriters as well as myself. So I really do hope you join the copywriting course. I think it's a fantastic investment. We always try to make people 10x their money. That means if you spend money with us, we want to make sure that we give you advice and changes that result in about 10x your investment. That way, you're not really spending money, you're investing it in something. And that is our goal with everyone who joins. So I hope you join the copywriting course and I will talk to you inside.